Hi, my name is Ray at Water Heaters Now. And what we're going to do today is we're going to show you how to do the routine maintenance that you should do annually on a Westinghouse electric water heater. Now these come in 50, 80, or 100 gallon units. This is an 80 gallon unit. So as you can see by the sticker, we installed this 1222 of 2018. And what we do is we recommend that the annual routine maintenance is done every year. It'll keep your water heater clean. It'll keep the stainless steel elements operating properly. And one of the things that's really cool about this heater is it has a limited lifetime warranty because they make it out of uh, 118 stainless that's robotically welded. And they believe it's going to last a lifetime because if it ever leaks, they're going to replace the tank for you. So it's a cool thing on the Westinghouse. So what we're going to do at this time is the first thing we're going to do is turn off the power at the breaker. So let's go ahead and do that. So to begin the process, the most important thing to do at the very beginning is turn the power off to your water heater. If you drain your water heater without turning the power off, you'll break your elements and cause other damage to your heater. So you want to locate your water heater breakers, and here we can see it's at point 21 and 23, and that tells us that this double pull breaker is the switch for our water heaters. And then next in the process will be to turn the water valve off. You'll have a full port handle. You just turn that so that it makes a T or a cross with the pipe, and now no water can be introduced into the water heater. The next thing we want to do, because there's a vacuum effect inside the water heater, is that we want to turn a hot water faucet on somewhere in the house. It gives it air to breathe so that the water heater can then drain. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. So the next step in the process is to take the water heater and drain it all the way down. You'll notice on the, on the valve at the bottom, the drain valve, there's just a slot. It's set up for a straight edge screwdriver. You place the screwdriver in that slot. And now a quarter turn opens the valve all the way and a quarter turn closes it all the way. So we're going to go ahead and open it so that the water heater can drain. Now when you're doing this at home, you just have a short hose connected to a floor drain. But in this situation, just for speed's sake, we have a pump hooked up so that we can evacuate the water heater more quickly. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. And turn the pump on and you'll notice that we have a, we have a trickle of water now. But when we turn the pump on, we get water coming out in a rapid pace. Okay, so the water heater is totally drained down to the base of the tank. So what we're going to do now is we're going to introduce a little bit of water into the base by turning this valve. And we're going to do that just for three or four seconds. And what's going to happen is the equivalent of when you're done washing dishes in your sink, but there's still some yuck at the bottom. And so you spray it all around the outside, then it goes down the drain. The bottom of these tanks are made for that kind of process. So now that it's drained, we're just going to turn it out. We're leaving the drain valve open. We're just going to open it for two, three, four seconds. And it's swirling the water in the bottom and it's rinsing any sediment or any other dirt that may have rested at the bottom of the tank from draining. And as you can hear, now it's draining again. and I can hear that it's almost totally stopped. So we're gonna do that again and just repeat this process one to three times. And in that way you can rest assured that your entire tank is clean as the day you bought it. If you do this annually, uh, you'll continually have a tank that operates at peak efficiency and it'll also keep dirt and corrosion from being in the water that you bathe and shower in. Now that we've drained the water heater all the, down, all the way down, we're gonna take the screwdriver we're going to isolate the heater by turning that valve off. We can disconnect the hose. And we're ready to fill the heater up and put it back into operation. Okay, we're almost wrapped up. We're just going to turn the water back onto the heater. And after it's filled up completely, then we'll go ahead and turn the power back onto the unit. So now the water heater is filled. It's ready to be put into service. You come to your electrical panel and you can see that breakers 21 through 23 are for the water heater. And when you come across, we have this turned off from when we drain the water heater. And you'll always recognize a water heater breaker because there's two poles on your box and usually a minimum of 30 amps, which this is. So we're going to go ahead and just push that back in. In this case, put that behind it so that if it needs to trip, it can, but it is a arc fault 
breaker, so it's a very safe way to protect your water heater from electrical surge.